слушай. this uh, when you are ill Andrew you go to a hospital and you get treatment from doctors they look after you they make injections they give you pills they give you food and care this it is called treatment you are ill drink cold drinks and stay at home and read an interesting book this is the best cure Yes. Right, I'm watching football. Yes. Are you watching football? I'm recording all the matches. It's um, it's not very pleasant, of course, but it's not very important on the other hand because, I mean, life develops the way it does, and um, it's better to um, live. It as it is. And, uh, I try not to pay attention to such things. Mm -hmm. I just try to do what I usually do mm -hmm. and be happy with whatever surrounds me. Let them let them write it down. A That's all. And the first clone frog appeared in 1968. But interesting cloning grew in 1997 when. Dr. Jan Wilmot and his colleagues from Edinburgh University announced the birth of the world's first cloned sheep, Dolly. Do you think it's possible that some dictator... Uh, by the way, how do we pronounce the word before dictator? Evil. Evil. What is evil? Which of them do you think wouldn't be very ethical to do? Cloning itself. Cloning itself? Well, there's a big, big dispute about cloning. Why? Do, who thinks that cloning is not ethical? I mean, the interview with uh, Katja, you said uh, about uh, 20th century music. The sense of beauty had been forgotten in, in the last century. It's not forgotten. It's not forgotten. I, I'd say it's diminished because uh, intellect starts prevailing, I'd say, uh, I think intellect starts prevailing due to a lot of technological advances that's around us. And also a sense of fear and destruction fear and the destruction. prevails in modern music as well. Mm -hmm. I'd say that these two factors are very important, you know, and are very much prevailing in a lot of music nowadays. Mm -hmm. that's, that's for sure, that's true. What you are making now uh, in, in your composition, they are intended to uh, express beauty or other things? Well, uh, first of all, I try to be truthful and realistic. Um, I, I, one day I heard someone say that I think Johann Sebastian Bach said that music should glorify God and should make human grow up and uh, these words stuck in my memory and um, they are still very important words for me so I'd say that <coughs> there are two main tendencies in what I'm doing the first tendency is really portraying beauty and portraying beautiful uh, and deep things. Well, I do it the way, I don't know how well uh, I'm doing it, but I try and do my best to make beautiful things. Another thing 
is something that I just can't, um, I simply, simply mm, must do, I feel. I can't stay away from it. And this is sort of ordinary life with uh, all ugly things, you know, um, deception, hatred, you know, things like this, human passions, which are very, very interesting to me. But one thing that I, I never want to do is to portray the evil things, you know, bad um, and devilish things, while showing that you like it, you know. Because um, the listener will feel very well whether the composer just shows the blackness of things while staying away from it, just showing it like in a mirror, or when he shows these black things and um, likes them, you know, he, he doesn't just show them, he shows that he likes these things. This difference is very important and I always try to make it quite distinguishable. Um, music has a lot of energy in it, and um, because I work with a lot of musicians, and they very often tell me what they feel after playing this or that piece of work. Um, after playing some piece of work, they say that they feel emotionally empty, you know, that all this music with its black energy draws um, all their own energy away from them. Listeners very often get depressed as well. Um, recently I read a very interesting account um, you know, of a journalist who visited a concert. I don't want to say again the name of the composer and everything, but when he left, um, he and the audience, as he said, had the feeling that they didn't want to do anything, they just wanted to lay down and die because they were so emotionally depressed. So yes, if a composer has strong energy, this energy very easily uh, is very easily transformed into his music and then it affects the audience. And the other way around, if a composer has very strong positive energy, then the same way the audience leaves uh, the concert with positive emotions. не поезд, но звучит круто. Не поезд, я забыл Но мне кажется, можно в жертву принести тот факт, что эта песня про поезд такому эффекту, потому что очень классно так вот. Надо просто не сажать темп в девятый, а то мы там начинаем... Лер, мне кажется, хватит на сегодня, более да, чем ну, достаточно. Спасибо вам огромное. Мы больше с вообще. Чего? Мы Шуриком еще не позанимались с вами, мы только занимались с вами. А про Мне сказал 12 Ну, Ваван тоже может 12 в среду, а вот это не может. У меня просто уже все будет поехать. Да, да. А мы... Мне кажется, нет, если мы собираем побольше Один мотив, который очень 
сильно меня волнует, может быть, потому что я русский человек, это тема, тема тоталитаризма в музыке. Наше государство, как, наверное, никакое иное, пострадало от тоталитарной системы, от того, что общество было пронизано тоталитаризмом снизу доверху, от того, что каждый человек жил в постоянном страхе, и некоторые люди питались этой страшной энергии тоталитаризма. Те, кто служили в органах безопасности, имели очень привилегированное положение. Они могли делать с людьми все, что хотели, и очень часто пользовались этой властью. И э, вот я заметил, что раз за разом мне очень хочется именно раскрывать вот эти вот образы в музыке. Очень, очень страшный мотив. говорить о совпадениях. Квартет, четыре стихотворения Даниила Андреева.